What's up you guys, Avery here. Wanted to bring you guys an updated Mystic Mind deck profile. I wanted to bring this for a couple reasons. One, because I saw a build that I believe topped in Georgia where the guy was main decking a copy of Chain Energy, two copies of Prohibition, two copies of Wave Motion Cannon, two copies of Left Arm Offering. He was playing a bunch of crazy stuff in his build and I tried it. I didn't really like it. Um, I just, I couldn't get with it. Um, and then someone had commented on the Dice Burn deck that I posted a few months back saying, do you have any sort of uh, other burn strategies uh, and things like that and so I left a comment telling him that tomorrow which is today obviously I would be posting an updated Mystic Mind deck profile uh, because really Mystic Mind is the best way to play burn right now until Mystic Mind gets limited or banned or what have you um, you know if you're trying to play something without Mystic Mind you're really just doing it wrong so this is for you commenter uh, yeah this is this is Mystic Mind Unless you've been living under uh, a Yu-Gi-Oh! rock and don't know what Mystic Mind is, this card's busted AF. Uh, if you're not playing three copies of it in any burn deck, I don't know what you're doing. And it also pisses a lot of people off. So, um, I should say too, uh, for those of you who are maybe newer to the channel or don't know the story, my dad and I have been playing Yu-Gi-Oh! together for years. He's always been playing Burn and Stun, Gadget Stun, Barrier Statue Stun, you name it. Um, so really, this is a, a combination of his deck ideas, uh, his build especially, along with um, some card text that I've chosen to put in here as well. So it's really been sort of a team effort. So without any further ado, uh, be sure to like the video and hit that subscribe button. Let's go ahead and dive right in. We are playing two copies of Silent Lobby. We are also playing two copies of Planet Pathfinder. I sold them because they were being reprinted in the new gold series, Maximum Gold. They have not yet arrived in the mail. Nine days shipping for standard, which I think is kind of weird. But anyway, two Silent Lobby and two Planet Pathfinder. Planet Pathfinder is essentially two more copies of Mystic Mind. You summon it, tribute it, search it to get Mystic Mind in your hand. Silent Lobby is very good. A lot of people don't realize how this card works. And a lot of people, a lot of Mystic Mind decks, I should say, aren't even playing this card anymore. Uh, the way that it works um, is that, the, well, normally the way it works, how it's supposed to work, is that you special summon this to your opponent's field. It's got 2,000 offense. Uh, when you summon it, you, the person summoning it to the opponent's field, gain 2,000 life points, but then the opponent gets to draw a card. However, as long as Silent Wobby is face up on their field, uh, their hand size limit becomes three. So during each of the opponent's end phases, they have to discard cards until they only have three cards in their hand. So if they're not able to link off with this, or tribute it, or, you know, flip it face down, or just, you know, have some way to get it from their field to back to your own grave, uh, their hand size limit is going to be three unless that they can keep on setting back row. So I've played a lot of games on uh, why, uh, EDO Pro, uh, excuse me, where people are like, WTF, why do I have to discard? And I'm like, Silent Wobby. They think that they don't have to discard cards to have three because of Mystic Mind, but it's a continuous effect. And, you know, Mystic Mind doesn't stop continuous effects. So, know your rulings, folks. Know your rulings. Um, so, other than those four monsters, the two Wobbies and the two Planet Pathfinder, um, the rest is just spells and traps. So, we are playing three copies of Pot of Extravagance. You've got to play three. If you're not playing three, I don't know what you're doing. Uh, I don't like Disparity in this deck. I think Disparity is kind of bad. Uh, I'd rather use Extrav. Um, to have the ability to draw two cards, you know, getting one off the disparity just doesn't seem that good to me. And then we're also playing three Pot of Duality. I love being able to go extra draw two, and then use a duality to get a third card. It's just pluses for days. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's good. And then we get into the Cancer of the deck. Three Mystic Mine. Just so good. I mean, it's Mystic Mine. You sit there, you whip out your dick, and, uh, you know... Or as I like to say, you're diddly, and you proceed to play with yourself as you have this on the board. But we're not done there, because that's not cancer enough. We also have to play three copies of Field Barrier, three copies of Demise of the Land, one copy of One Day of Peace, one Terraforming, and we're not using Wave Motion Cannon. Everyone thinks that that card's good. It's garbage compared to Cauldron of the Old Man. Uh, works in tandem with also if you're about to go to time because if you're about to go into time you can play this and start gaining life points or you can play a second one and start dealing damage because remember the card itself is not um it's it's a it's a lone fire once per turn as i call it meaning if you activate one you can use the first one to gain 500 activate a second one and then inflict 300 damage to the opponent so you can keep on swip swapping or use them both to gain life you know if you've got three on the board you can gain 1500 life points if they each have one counter so it's your win con if you lose all three you're going to be losing the game unless you can deck out the opponent um we're playing two Goddess Skull Oracle. Um, this is a 40 card build. We were playing a third, but it was really bricky. So, you know, we're just going to toss that to the side. Uh, two Goddess Skull, um, again, 40 card main deck. 
Three was really bricky. This is great. Um, be sure, be smart. Summon your Silent Wobby to your field first, and then, or to the opponent's field first with a Mystic Mind face up, then activate the Goddess Scolds, because if you use Goddess Scolds effect um, to look at the opponent's top three, you're going to be locked in only special summoning fairies, and then you can't give them Silent Wobby. So be sure to give them Silent Wobby, or as my dad calls it, Silent Slobby, because, you know, we're like that. <laughs> um, yeah. So be sure that you're resolving your effects correctly. Very, very good. Um, I've seen players that play this, they're like, well, I wait for the opponent's hand size to get low so I can control every card that they draw. And I'm like, I would rather have the knowledge of what they're playing from turn one. So like, if you're going first and you don't know what the opponent's playing, play this on turn one. Look at the top three cards of the deck and start controlling what they draw. Rather do it sooner rather than later because, you know, they could be drawing into an out and you don't know because you're not playing this. Play this the moment that you draw into it. And then we're also playing a couple more tech cards that um, really I don't see any other Mystic Mind builds playing. We're playing two Magical Stone or Magic Reflector and two Magical Mallet. The Magic Reflectors are in here because uh, if you have like Field Barrier and Mystic Mind face up, you can activate Magic Reflector. And what it does is that you target a face up continuous spell on your field, uh, you place a counter on it, and anytime that continuous spell will be destroyed, the counter gets removed instead. So you can play this on Cauldron to protect it from being destroyed once by Twin Twisters. You can place it on Field Barrier, which is then protecting Mystic Mine, and then it's like a double pop because then Field Barrier locks both players out of playing any more field spells, so you lock the opponent out of their field spell zone, which is always nice, especially if they need that to get their combos going, like in, uh, let's say, Cosmo or um, Dinosaurs, because Dinosaurs can be a tough matchup because of the Lost World field spell. They can put tokens on your board. If you can lock them out sooner rather than later, that's great. If they try to pop the Field Barrier and this is up, then the token gets removed first. Then they have to try and pop the Field Barrier again just to get to the Mystic Mine. So it adds more of a blockage to the opponent from being able to get rid of Mystic Mind. Magical Mallet is also good because if you have a really dead hand, especially in your opening hand, uh, you can just send all your cards back and draw the same number of cards. This is really good because of the fact that pretty much the deck has a around 80 to 85 percent chance to open up like you know what you want to open up Mystic Mind first turn and all that. The other 15 percent is where you just open up <clears throat> like excuse me <clears throat> multiple copies of like Goddess Scald or you know, just a bunch of ass, like a bunch of back row negates, like Dark Bribe and Judgments, but like no Mystic Mind. Magical Mallet can really get you uh, to where you need to be. And then finally for the traps, we're playing Triple Solemn Judgment, Triple Dark Bribe, and then we are also playing two copies of Heavy Storm Duster, one copy of Metaverse, and one copy of Curse Seal, the Forbidden Spell. I don't see a lot of Mystic Mind builds main decking Heavy Storm or Curse Seal. Um... I like Heavy Storm Duster because, especially against like the Alter Guys matchup, you can use Storm Duster to pop two of their back row, especially if they're going second, and you can just wreck their day. Um, if the opponent has like an Imperial Order face up, you can use the Heavy Storm Duster to pop it. They're not going to expect it. Curse Seal is so damn good because if the opponent tries to say, well, F you, I'm going to Cosmic Cyclone you to get around your field barrier and get rid of your Missing Mind, you can just go Curse Seal and dump, you know, like let's say another copy of Goddess Scold if you already have it face up. And then you're able to lock the opponent out of using that card for the rest of the duel, which is really nice. So if the opponent's side deck's in Triple Twin Twister, they use one to try and pop your back row, and you have Curse Seal. Well, now they're locked out of their other two Twin Twisters for the rest of the game. And then you can use Goddess Skull to put it on top of their deck or anything like that. The extra deck can be anything that you want it to be. The only thing I suggest is to play three copies of three cards. Three copies of Link Karibo, three copies of Secure Gardena, and three copies of Salaman Great All Mirage. Um, because there have been situations that have come up where um, I have like summoned a Planet Pathfinder and um, linked off with it to make All Mirage and then link off into Secure Gardena, which is really good in the mirror match because then you don't take any effect damage. They have to dip the other Mystic Mind Toxic player has to out the Secure Gardena. So that's always nice. Um, and of course you're playing three copies of each because you don't want to lose all three copies from Pot of Extravagance. So the side deck really can be anything that you want it to be. There's no events here in Jacksonville, Florida right now, so I really haven't given a shit to create a side deck. Uh, big cards that I would suggest would be Triple Evenly Match, Triple Lightning Storm, maybe Prohibition, another copy of Curse Seal possibly. Um, you could try Pankratops, you can try Lava, uh, Lava Golem, you could try... Um, Kaijus. Uh, there, there's a lot of things that you can try with it. You could also try Harpy's Feather Duster. I've been testing around with Harpy's Feather Duster. Um, obviously, this is a 38 card main deck right now because Planet Pathfinder is not in here, but we're still going to give you a, a little show of a hand anyway. 
to show you what we've got here. Four, five, and this is of course a very busted hand. Uh, you're going to use Extrav, which is going to get you uh, a Goddess Skull and a Silent Wobby, which really is not terrible because already with this hand you're going to be winning the game uh, because you can just, uh, well, if our grave is here, uh, you can activate Mystic Mine. We could get that glare on out of here. Drop the Silent Wobby to the opponent's field, so now they got to deal with that, and they have a monster, so they're shut out with uh, with Mystic Mine. You activate the Goddess Skull, look at the top three cards of their deck, and you start controlling the game from there. Obviously, you would want to hope that this Goddess Skull and Silent Wobby were like a dark bribe into judgment, realistically speaking, um, but that's just not always going to happen. So, yeah, I mean, it's a straightforward deck, you guys. It's really nothing complicated. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's it's very easy to play. It's um, somewhat affordable. I mean, the pot of extras were pretty expensive, but these are out of Tune Chaos. So, you know, if you don't have any events going on right now, don't even buy these. Just test these online or save up your money. Do whatever it is that you got to do uh, to get these cards. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Um, obviously, this deck is very toxic and cancerous, and I feel like I get tumors every time I look at this deck. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think. In the comments below, let me know what kind of changes you would suggest or want to make. Again, this is about an 80-85% chance um, of being able to open up good, so your win ratio is probably somewhere within there as well. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.